right in that building. Love that. So. Okay, let's see. I'll get started on Instagram here. Uh, you don't need to do Instagram. I just do it to send people over to the YouTube. All right. And I do. I run like a little intro before we start. Oh. Um, Not the whole time. I, I gotta let people know to be safe, though. We still gotta be safe out here. Hey, man, I I agree, one hundred. You know? and, and and the reason why I say that is, I I'm not a fan of the mask. No, not at all. But I feel like if that's gonna get us back to some sort of normalcy as fast as possible, I'd rather do that than to do nothing at all. One hundred million percent. All right. So sorry for a little out of order today, but let's run the. Promos here. to yeah. it what's going on man not too much man not too much oh, i was supposed to big you up more than you trying to say i don't know i, I mean that was cool uh, I, 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 like a little uh, applause uh, maybe maybe a little applause or something like that i don't know you know it's, like, <laughs> man. it's just well, me all right because i'm gonna let you tell you, you you would tell your whole story so we're gonna get all into you know what i'm saying uh it's it's freezing in DC, okay? It's like thirty degrees. It's supposed they said it's gonna get warmer in the next few days and that's like fifty. But uh that's that's it's freezing. You look you look nice and toasty over there like you had it, you know. It's it almost snowed the other day. Yeah, oh it looks nice God. out there. Looks I looks pretty tropical. Like mm. I never mm. it. Looks I pretty tropical. Good. Yes. When I moved out here, I, my hashtag was fuck winter. So I, I like it. I like it. I like it warm anyway. So some people like yeah. it. Some people say this is cool weather, but I like it warm anyway. Gosh, gosh. Well, thank you, sir, for joining us. I appreciate it. I appreciate and, you calling uh, me three minutes ago and saying, "Hey, can you do the show?" I appreciate being the last first minute guest. That's a yeah, I didn't know this to do the show, but it was actually today starting late was my fault, which is not usually the case. Um, but I I went I, there's a Starbucks right behind our house, and I needed to go get my caffeine. Okay. And I, I walked down the steps and walked over there like I normally do, and I came back, and the elevator was out to get. Oh back up. man! 
circle back around the building. So you're saying, so you're saying after you got out of the helicopter, you had to get back in the elevator and... Well, it, there are two buildings right over it to the to the, uh, to the west of us that have helipads on the top of them. I've never seen that helicopter actually land on one. But yeah, they, they, they do exist. Okay. So, uh, uh, but yeah, so, so my apologies for being late to everybody uh, and especially to you, sir. That's cool. But your girl says it's windy up there in Silver Spring. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate your, uh, your, your blanket. Behind you. I don't even like football. I literally could give a flying fuck, but I just definitely do not understand the logic of people that are from DC or even from the DMV. Right. That like the Cowboys, uh, Kyrie, uh, and Chris, uh, and Herb, I don't. Uh, un- I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand, I don't, I don't understand it. Like, yeah. Oh, I said, I said, was I say it was the Michael Irvin days. Everybody picks a team that's when they're doing great, like when Jordan had his run. Everybody picks a team, and when they're having their run, they're like, "Yeah, that's that's my team." They want Mike won two straight. You didn't think Mike was good because remember they lost, and he was like, "Yo, we couldn't make it." See, you must have pay attention to the part where I. I don't watch football at all. I don't mm. care. I don't know any of the players. Nope. I don't give a shit at all. Okay. I just don't understand the rationale of being from a city and repping the team of your rival city. Like, no matter where you're from, I don't understand it. But, yeah. But, anyway, that's not what this interview is about. So, why don't you, you know, as I normally do, give us a back to cool shit, bro. You're the first person that wore sunglasses on the show. So... Yeah, thank you for setting the record. Uh, I tried, I tried. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now you look like a star, man. You good, man. You thank good. you. you that brand be up, the bro. first of many here. It'll be the first of many. Oh, get the merch too. God dang it. Uh, anyway. There you go. There you go. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So while we're on merch, so well, what is your? How do people? How do people get your merch? I'm gonna put it up. Uh, there. United Masters, man. Go to United Masters. Search for DJ King Cannon. Uh, search for TCB yeah. Bounce Beat Kings. Don't do it right now, man. God dang it. Don't do it right now. No, no, don't do it right now. No, I'm telling you, don't do it right now. I'm telling you, that's where I'm. That's right. Hold I got it. Yeah, right there. All right, good deal. Okay. All right, so moving beyond that, tell me how you got started in music. Uh, tell me how you got started in music. What made you become a DJ, and how did you become what we call a go-go DJ? What drew you to the genre? Uh, I love music. First off, I think uh, that, that's my first love is was was music when I was a baby. I used to dress up, and uh, I don't know if you remember the song, uh, Putting on the Ritz. Yeah. I forgot the name of the group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I would, hold, I would hold full concerts in my house in, in, in front of my family, uh, with, in, well, in front of my mom. And she wouldn't pay me any mind, but she'd be like, yeah, that's okay. He's going to do something with this music. She just didn't know what. And we had everything from the... The eight track to the to the to the cassette player to the record player to all everything that you could think of musically around she had and and she had a beautiful ear and also my mom she was a uh, she went to um what is it broadcasting school for um for music and I think she did an internship at before it was called what what was ninety ninety three before it was ninety three it was. Uh, uh. I forgot. It was on. It was still owned by the Hughes's, though. I, I know uh, one of the was Hughes's. W O L or was that? Yeah, that? one one yeah. one of those. Anyway, she interned up there. So, um, you know, music just always been in me. And um, when I was younger, uh, I just I just I just gravitated to the music. So at like uh, probably around thirteen or fourteen, I I I I, I found the uh, Rare Essence um, pool party tape, and um, from. Oh. You skipped over too much. What? Were you, were you, so between putting on the Ritz and Rare Essence. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big gap. But it was gonna go back. I was gonna say how oh, I got. Okay, so okay. I was gonna go back and say, you know, I, and and and, well, I'm just you know, and going from. Is, go, told me the other day that I'm the Joe Rogan of Gogo. Like, oh, so you got to break it. Okay, okay. Oh, we gonna get into the details. Okay. Like, who who is Joe Rogan? Who who the hell is Joe Rogan? More like the biggest podcaster in the world. How do you not know Joe Rogan? I gotta get that. I gotta get. I gotta get that. I gotta get that on my phone. That's a podcast. I don't. I don't know. He's been leaning a little too conservative, Trumpy for me lately. So I don't know if I can yeah. really. I don't know if I want to be called that because that ain't mine. 
uh, philosophy, but in terms of the way he interviews, you know, like he digs in, like he'll, he'll, he won't let you just get away with a simple answer. He's okay. going to interrupt you okay. and make you explain it. So All right. I'm preparing you for the fact that we're, I'm going to- We're going to go into, into it. it. Okay, it. cool. So, yeah. uh, so I, um, like I said, the, 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 the gap wasn't really that big because uh, putting on a red side, I was probably like 10. And then from 10 to 13, I'm, 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 I'm sneaking in uh, PA Palace trying to get a job. And, and, and it, it wasn't a big gap in between. It went from, so that, that was when I saw the Essence Joan, I was like, man, this music is crazy, man. Um, I had a cousin that was in a band, uh, Raw Dimensions, back in the day. And uh, uh, shout out to Casey. He, uh, he had he, he always had a, he was a lead mic and um he always had the uh the cassettes around the house and stuff so i i was stealing stealing his jones and, and, and going in listening like oh oh he know what he doing on that thing okay okay like i say i only heard that music first i didn't even realize that when i heard go-go music some of the music that i heard from go-go i never even realized that it was Got taken from another genre of music. I I didn't even know the. Di I thought everything I heard in Gogo -Go was original music. Like he like if I never I never heard Lottie Dottie. So my my cousin band hit Lottie Dottie. So I'm like, oh that's they joint. You know what I'm saying? And then I hear Lottie Dottie on the radio or something. I'm like, yeah, they stealing your joint, cause right. they got right. your what's going on. So it's you know. It's funny that you say that because there's a big there was a big stink. So I try to, as you know, as we have discussed, I've been trying to stay off of Facebook as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. To, uh, alleviate my levels of stress. It's good problems. for your sanity to take a break from the end and from social media. You you need to do that. Everybody. I'm totally to, I'm, so I'm still on Instagram, but it's mainly it's because people don't really get into it on Instagram. It's not like a big yeah. ass argument on Instagram. It's like here's my picture, like it, okay, cool, all right, cool. So I can I can sort of deal with that, but you know, with the stress of of, of, of COVID that we're all feeling being locked in the house and the fact that, you know, my industry is the live music industry, which has been totally destroyed, oh. which is a bit stressful as well. What's up, Chad? Um, Chad, jump on YouTube, man. We on YouTube, youtube.com slash go go ticks. You can see uh, the comments? Uh, I can't see the comments. We see can how cool Nick Cannon is. We can chat. Fucking sunglasses on and everything. Like, he's the coolest motherfucker we have on here. Trying to tell you. Head on over to YouTube, bro. I'm trying to tell you, um, I just want y'all to be cool. So, so, um, we, I, but I did jump in because my man Easy Tommy, who works with Rich Harrison, right? The guy that produced Crazy in Love for Beyonce and all that, my man Easy yeah, Tommy, yeah. sent me the video of CeeLo performing the go go. You know, he did a medley of his own song and the butt and sardines on a Soul Train Awards this past Sunday, right? Okay. But he sent it to me, and I thought he was just sending it to me to put it up on the blog, on the GoGo Ticks blog, because I try to put up anything, anything that's GoGo related that touches a broader audience. I try Same to thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the culture. That's what that's called, sharing the culture. Good job. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So, so. That's what I thought he was sending it to me for, but then he texted me back. I was like, dope, but he texted me back. He's like, yeah, I put it in a go-go report, and they're going crazy. So I was like, oh, shit, you're going to make me go back on Facebook and look at the go-go report. So I went on a go-go report, and everybody is complaining about CeeLo stealing go-go. Now, not everybody. I don't want to blame everybody, but like a good 50 people out of the 30,000 people that are on that Facebook page. So I don't want to blame everybody, but... Okay. Um, you know, and so it just, it, you know, in light of what you're saying, with with you not knowing that these songs were from other genres, like I put up, I hope you guys realize that close to 0%, not 0%, but close to 0% of all of your favorite go-go records are not original records. So yeah. how are you going to complain that somebody else is stealing go-go when really they're showing love? I, I, I don't think they considered it like that. I know they don't. That's why I put it in there. You know what I'm saying? Because we we, we, we consider shit. We, we it's and and I <laughs> my man Bam Bam six forty who is a funny controversial dude. Shout but I Bam. had him on 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 the show a couple of weeks ago and he was on live earlier today, which I don't know why I watched, but I did because the notification came up. But he he made a good point. He was like, how do you expect anybody else to 
like to 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 fuck with Go Go when every time somebody from out of town tries to show love, we just fucking complain about it. And right. we're, oh, well, they should have did it this way. They should have got this band. They should have right. reached out to this person. Right. They should have did it this way. Now, what the fuck should you have done? Right. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so I don't want to start on a negative note, but it just sort of. You know, well, what, what do you what do you feel what do you feel about what do you feel about that though? What's your what's your what's your real opinion on that? We talked about it off air, but what, what's your your honest opinion about that? When when you saw it first, what did you think of the CeeLo joint? Yeah, I was like, this this is dope as shit. This is what this is what go go back. I mean, I don't know. If I, I'm kind of fat now. I don't know if I would have worn a tight leather tangerine suit. Oh, my boy, my boy, my boy style from the 70s. That's from the 70s. They used to do that. He, he's trying to, he's trying to give a montage to the 70s. That was the vibe he was trying to create. And if you know anything about CeeLo, if you pay attention for more than five seconds, that's his whole shtick. Right. Like he wears weird shit. That's his thing. So it's, yeah. So Daryl, Daryl says, uh, thank you, U Street Music Group. Um, Dar- Daryl says we gotta stop complaining and just celebrate when Gogo gets love from big names. How you see in the comments? Why I can't see the comments? I want to see the comments. Hold on, how do I do this, man? Uh-huh. You should be able to. Let me see. It should be on the side of your screen. I did not pay Comcast this month, so it might be. <laughs> you probably can't see he's got a dark ass sunglasses I'm trying to, on. I'm trying to oh. steal my neighbor's Wi Fi, so let me see if it. <laughs> oh, or not. Shit. Maybe All right, folks, so it. this is a preemptive warning that hopefully this, this, uh, Interview won't cut off in the middle of it because <laughs> Cannon is jacking somebody else's Wi-Fi. Don't know where um, the thing is. Okay. But no, I think it. I think it's great, and to take it to take it a step. Yeah, exactly. Bella, my beat says it shows there's a market for GoGo, and to take it even a step further from what Daryl Jones is saying, we gotta stop. He says, "I got, gotta I gotta see the comments." We gotta stop complaining and just celebrate when GoGo gets love from big names. Even bigger than that. I want us to be the big names. Right. But we got to do shit different than we've been doing it because clearly for the last 45 fucking years, the way we've been doing it ain't working. I think, I, I think, mean, I think. It's not working. It's th- not working for us to be national on TV. You know right. what I'm saying? That's right. working for what it is right now. And that's great. And no disrespect to that. And no disrespect to any bands that are doing their thing right now because if that's how you want to do it, then there's nothing wrong with that. The problem I have is when. Bands want say they want to do more and then complain when they don't get more because they don't do the work to get it. But anyway, I'm digressing slightly, but your question, I thought it was great. I think it's a good look for Go-Go. You know what I'm saying? Like anything that happens, the Stevie Wonder song, the the, the Rares and Snoop, and Snoop song, right. I'm not going to necessarily ride around bumping those in my car. Exactly. But, either, but that's just me and that's my personal taste. And that doesn't mean I'm not proud of them, and that doesn't mean I don't think it's awesome. You know what I'm saying? And it's a good look for us. For me, if you love the music, support the culture. Uh, understand that everything isn't going to be perfect. Every 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 song that comes out isn't going to be to your liking. But know that 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 these bands are working hard to get to something that's that's the next level. But everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Um, yeah. You know, they, they, they have the right to feel the way they feel. They're fans, they're, 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 they're listeners of the music. Some of them uh, grew up off of the music. Some of them um, grew up in bands or started bands. And, you know, so they're entitled to their opinion. Um, you know, just, but, and, you know, just just try to focus more on the love because it, it, a lot of people gonna going to hate what we do, but we got to look at the love, see how many people loved it, you know? A lot of people love what, what what he did so that's the that's the energy we got to look at because well, the, thing, the one thing the, the bright light that i will say is that you know from some some of the talks that we've been having and 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 with other people that i've just been having just around around the culture which i want to get back into in a second because i want to i want to talk about the what you think it's the the delineating factors between the music and the culture you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, because I think it's an important point, and, and I don't want to interrupt your story too much. But I, I do want to point out a, a small point of light that I feel like most of the people that I've been having conversations with around GoGo and the topic of GoGo, the the um, the energy around it seems to be much more positive now than it has been in my past 30 years of being part of it. You know what I'm saying? Now it concerns me slightly that maybe all the people that I'm talking to 
that have this positive energy are a little too old to do anything about it. Mm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because music, the music industry is a youth-driven culture, and Absolutely. I'm concerned we're missing that generation, and there aren't enough kids that care about it. But I think that I'm hoping that we are like not all the way over the cliff yet, where we can still pull things back a little bit, make it a little bit cool for the kids, and have the kids start to pick back up on it again. But we got to do something quickly. But it, aside from that, you mentioned you you said something that I really love. If you if you love the music, support the culture. So explain if you can, and, and from your perspective, what is the difference between the music and the culture, and how would you define each? Okay, so the music is 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 you know the 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 your your favorite band. That's that's your music right there. So. Mm -hmm. You're not going to like everything that everyone does because if my favorite band is Northeast Groovers or Sugar Bear or, 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 or Chuck or, or, or Scooby and them, if right. somebody else does something and I'm, and I'm a part of the culture or, or part of the music, I'm not going to love everything. So that's, that's the separation. And then the culture is the people who are a part of the fabric, which are, I like to say, the people who pay the money who come through the doors, who support the business. That's that's the culture who 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 buy the merchandise, who 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 are there when you say it's free before 12, they like, "Hey, I'm gonna be there at one anyway. I'm gonna be there by second set any set. Anyway, that's the culture. That's the that's the, you know, so you got to you got to you got to love the music and, and support the culture. So, it's a it's a it's the same thing for both. What's up, CC? So to so to to sort of to, to, to make it concise, the music is actually the sound and, you know, further defined by maybe who your band is or who you gravitate towards musically, but the culture is all of the bands put together. There you and, go. There you go. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, I like so, you, okay, man. So I, I like you, man. You can break it down easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, um, oh shit. Instagram. Sorry, folks. Uh, ignore that. Um, why can't I edit it? Um, all right. Well, I guess it's just going to stay there. Um, so you, so we left off in your story with you trying to sneak in and get a job at PA Palace. Oh yeah. Which I did get the job by the way. Uh, the, I, think I, I think I, I think I, I think I was the vote? youngest, youngest employee. Uh, don't tell him that now, but yeah, at 14, I, I think I was the youngest employee. Hey, Pat, if you're watching, <laughs> gotta, uh, you know, I, it was like by like three months though. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't work until you was 15, but I was like 14 yeah. something, man. He let me in there. It was just like the club, you know, Which he slid location? me in uh, Capitol Plaza, the, the, the home base, man. I was man. there with, uh, yeah. rest in peace to Ray. Um, yeah. Ray actually sold me that Essence Jump, by the way. I, I wasn't too... Oh, yeah, so he's not going to get in trouble now. It's past statute of limitations, but uh, uh, rest in peace to Ray. And um, yeah, so I worked there for... Damn, I still feel like I worked there because <laughs> I, I still talk to him today. So um, uh, I started working there and that's when I got a chance to actually study the music part. You know, that's when I got to and go in depth with the music of what what this what we call the culture I guess now the the I, I I got to go behind it I got to listen to it I got to to find out what was the difference in you know just the different sounds from you could tell the difference in a, in a sound from a northeast to a backyard to a res and the boys and I took the time to when I say I studied the music you know they had everything in there from like 1972 from the the first I'm not going to say the first PA but the first reported PA that they say they they had as like from like 1972 What did you what did, what if anything did you notice between the difference in the eras like if you listen to the stuff from Oh the man or, oh from man the, from the 90s the 2000s and 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 one caveat being that some people that may that may be watching this now, but more importantly, some people that may be watching later, um, that may just run across this on YouTube, assume that they don't know anything about Gogo. -Go. Right, and most people don't. And, and, but most people don't. And, and from an outsider to here, it all sounds the same. It's one. It's one or two bands here. 
But did that in nineteen? Did it in the seventies? Ones that you were listening to? Absolutely not. Everybody had a different tone, a different texture. Um, it, you know, it's like we all. I think everybody wanted to sound like somebody. So you kind of everybody had that foundation, but still put their own twist to it. It's still kind of the same now, you know. Uh, I could tell the difference in the. Come on, you can't. I'm giving you the side eye. You can't tell the difference in, in reaction and, and TCB. They, they well, if, they, if they, if they, if they, that's what I'm saying. It's still a different. You, you can tell the difference in the sound, but it's not as distinct now. I remember when I was coming up in the '90s, I could listen to a Northeast Rubbers, a Junkyard, and a Backyard, and. Don't hate me, white boy, or anybody else, but I wasn't the biggest Rarestas fan. I didn't start to get into Rarestas until later. But when I was coming up, it was those three bands. Okay. I, I didn't That's, have your your three? That's your top three? That's your top three? That's your top three? When I was coming up in the 90s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, 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 we junkyard, because I'm from Annapolis, so Junkyard would come down to Annapolis all the time. Okay. And I, I just had a friend that was really in the North East Groups. Obviously, this was before I ever played for them. And then, back, I don't even remember how I got in the backyard, but at one time, me and Bubba started hanging, uh, you know, the original guitar player. Shout out to Bubba. Yep. And I used to go up to this, to this house all the time where we would jam out, so that really sort of got me in the backyard. And, you know, I liked them. But but my point is, is that I, I, I didn't have to hear G or Rapper or Bugs Voice or anybody, anybody playing any music at all. Mm. If all I needed to hear was Buggy and Sauce, Jeff and Smoke, or uh, whoever was, I think it was Blue Eye. Or no, I might have been, I don't remember if it was Blue Eye or Dre Dog at the time or whatever. Okay. And Wink. And I already knew what band it was. Yeah. And I just broke my own rule because I said assume that people don't know what we're talking about. So those, so basically what I'm saying is all I needed to hear was the percussionists. And you knew what band it was. And I knew what band it was because their sound was so defined and so distinct. Okay. But I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like in the 90s is where the percussion became significant. Now, let me not say that because Trouble Funk and my man T-Bone, like they had a very distinct style way back, you know, oh, hello. In, in, in terms of their percussion, they were different than everybody else. Yep. I feel like in the 90s is where the percussion became really the differentiating factor, whereas prior to that in the 70s and 80s, it was more about the music and the vocals and that was how you differentiated the yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was gonna say. It was more like song, more like uh I'm not gonna say like a temptationist style, but more like the vocalists were pushing more right. than, than than the percussion. Right. When did why do you think that changed? I don't know. I was again I was just listening. I wasn't there at that time period. Drugs maybe, I don't know what made them change. I, radio, the the way that well, people I have a theory. I have a theory. Okay. I could be wrong because I wasn't around then either. Right. But I have a theory my theory is that that's when it really took the main switch. I feel like after the butt happened, okay, right? yeah, and then there really wasn't anything major to follow up. Mm. That that band started losing hope mm. that anything bigger than local success could happen. Okay, and then at that point, it just became about how can we keep this dance floor going? How can we keep these clubs packed? And I'm not really worried about making a record or making a great song. I just want to make some money. Yeah, I just want to make sure right. we make some money. So I feel like I just feel like the way that you keep the dance floor going and go-go is by letting the fucking beat ride for as long as you can most of the time. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that might have had an influence. And I, I, I wasn't around then. Like somebody or Kato or, you know, or Nico or somebody could probably give a better, um, you know, a better real reasoning behind that than me but that's just my suspicion right because we got into go and we, and we could be wrong we could be wrong but you know that that's what it feels like yeah well because when i got into go i started playing in 92 91 or 92 i can't remember um it just it 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 didn't i was coming from other genres of music i was i had played in punk bands and like hip-hop bands and and stuff like that and I, it was just a totally different i was about to say how was that transition Again? How's that transition to, to 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 make that crossover from like straight? Did you go straight punk to a go go band or what was the no, band no, no, that you no, went no. from? No, from? Was, so when I was like when I was like so when I was ten, when I really I, it was sort of the same story as you like so when I was ten around ten is when I really started becoming aware of me. I mean I was 
there was always music around. Right. Like stepmother, like she could sing and play guitar. My mm-hmm. father could sing, like play guitar and sing a little bit. Right. Uh, but my stepmother was really good. And and then like they would, she would listen to really specific music and sort of dive in. And but then my mother would just listen to, like what's ever on the radio. So that's why I'm sort of like where I am because I have. The one side of my of my family, like my father's side, you know, with my stepmother or whatever, who was sort of really specifically into music for the sake of music, right. and my mother's side, my mother was just like whatever's on the radio. So that's why I I kind of have like the I appreciate music from a, a cultural standpoint and a and a sort of like music snob standpoint, but right. I also, you know, like just fucking trap and right you know and like whatever you know what i'm saying whatever is popular like so i i have like i like some of the shit that the music snobby people like right. but i also like the regular shit too because yeah. that's sort of how i grew up you yeah. know what i'm saying and i'll go back and forth from my mother to my father